Hallelujah. In the mystery of Thanksgiving today, I want us to understand something very vital. That Thanksgiving is a commandment. And if it's a commandment, then it is a covenant. Our God is a covenant-keeping God. Psalm 92 verse 1 says, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, and to sing praises unto Him. So when you are talking about thanksgiving, it's always to give thanks. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, it says, In everything, give thanks to the Lord, for this is the will, the pattern, the covenant, the agenda of God for me and for you. So if we don't understand it, we'll be getting out of his covenant. When we are murmuring and complaining and we're anxious, we are we're out there talking down issues and things. Don't always forget that First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10. Say, don't murmur, don't complain, so that you will not uh, copy the bad example of those ones who murmured and complained in the wilderness, and the devourer came and finished them, the destroyer came and finished them. If you want to be destroyed, no problem. Go ahead, murmur. Joel chapter 1, verse 12. It says, everything has dried up. Joel chapter 1, verse 12. Everything has dried up. Why? Because joy has dried up. A person of thanksgiving, having a heart of gratitude towards God in all things at all times, one sure thing there is that person will be joyful. And joy is something from the inside. It's our strength. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. He said the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy is not premised on things happening. It is premised right from our inner man. And it comes out. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10 says, If you faint in the time of battle, it means one thing. That your strength is small. So if joy is our strength, we need to make sure that joy keeps on the increase. If not, we lose in the battles of life and things will be drying up in our hands. God forbid. So it is a commandment from God. Colossians chapter 3 verse 15. It says, and be you thankful. And be you thankful. And be you thankful. And be you thankful. It's a state. It's a lifestyle. That is the second thing I want you to note. It's a lifestyle. It's not one and often. Something you do daily, consciously at all times, thanking God for everything. Because once you thank Him, you have committed Him. Once you thank Him, you are showing you have confidence in Him. Once you thank Him, you are showing you have a belief in God that the situation is, will never be out of hand. So we need to understand these things to thank Him. Then I want you to take note again, number three, that thanksgiving is in two categories. Number one, for what He has done. Look at Psalm chapter 103 for what he has done. We we'll thank God for what he has done. Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all all his benefits number verse 3 who forgiveth all the thy iniquities who healeth all thy diseases who redeemeth thy life from destruction who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies verse 5 who satisfieth thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles can you see that so it's, it's, it's important for us to know that we need to thank God for everything he has done in the past. Then again, we need to thank God. Oh God, I just pray that God will open our eyes to get this. I say the thanksgiving is in two categories for what he has done. That is offering appreciation to God for what he has done from our hearts. Look at Psalm chapter 28, verse 5. Psalm chapter 28, verse 5. I love the man of Galilee. He says, Because they regard not the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands. 
he shall destroy them and not build them up. Can you see that? When we give God thanksgiving, he builds us up. But when we don't thank him for the operation of his hands for what he has done, we leave him no chance than the, allowing the destroyer to come and begin to destroy, God forbid. So we need to give God thanks for what we have seen his hand do. Because his hand that performs everything we see, it is hand that brings to pass every word he has spoken. It is hand that brings to pass the dictates of the covenant, the benefits of the covenant. Praise God. So we need to thank him. And secondly, when we thank God, we are reminding God what is left to be done. We thank God for what he has done. The second part of it, as we are thanking him for what he has done, we are reminding him that there is something left. In Luke chapter 17, verse 17 to 12 to verse 19, this man came back. And then, when he found he was cleansed of his leprosy, he ran back to Jesus. And then, he bowed down before him and worshipped him and began to thank him. And Jesus said, are you the only one? Where are the other ones? So, Jesus was expecting the thanksgiving. And as he came thanking Jesus, now, the second part of it is that he reminded God for what he has not done. Before he was cleansed of his leprosy, but he was not made whole. And now he says, you are now made whole. So thanksgiving brings us into perfection. It reminds God of what he has, what is remaining in our lives. Each time we thank him. So when you don't thank him, you are the one that will lose. Whether we thank him or not, it doesn't impact on him. It only impacts on us. The benefits are for us. He cannot change. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6, I am the Lord, I change not. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So whatever he tells us to do, when we do them, it is for our good benefits. We don't do them, Iyoko. Mm -hmm. That's the way it works. And I pray we know this. It is for us, and it's individualized. It is personal. It is not for group. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12, he said, I come quickly with my reward to give every man, not every group, not every church. So you don't need to look unto others. The covenant is you and God. That's the way it works. Because if you look at other people and you say you want to be like them, well, you get the same results they are getting, good or bad. So you must understand it. When this leper came back and uh, he was cleansed, that's the first part. Thanking God, he reminded God again that something was remaining and uh, that the rest was done. The same thing with the woman with the issue of blood. The woman came, thanked, uh, touched the hem of the garment. Her, the issue of blood stopped. Jesus said, who touched me? And she now came and said she was the one. She fell on her face, began to thank Jesus. And the Bible says she told Jesus all the truth. And then she received Jesus, said, woman, you are made whole. So when we thank God, first, it is for what he has done. As we keep thanking him, it is to remind him of what remains. He knows what remains better than us. And then he's always doing that. So I want us to know that today. Let's live a life of thanksgiving. Let it be a lifestyle with us. Many things happen on earth today. Everywhere you see, there are many things that will want to make you to complain. Yes, people will deny you. People will accuse you unjustly. People will say everything. Some you did, some you didn't do. They will exaggerate things so that it can be sweet. And people like one story. They don't even go to get to the second part of any story. They run with it. They decorate it with their own lies too. And sometimes you hear these things. You, uh, being human, they want to trouble you. But the best thing is to thank the Lord. To thank the Lord. As you keep thanking them, you'll be able to overcome that. You look at the nations of the world, what is happening. You look at some nations, how the politicians are looting the economy and impoverishing the people. All you think about is to complain and criticize and murmur. But God is saying, thank me. When you thank me, you are committing my integrity and you are entering to covenant with me and then I will simply go and handle those things for you. You cannot handle them. So all every day you wake up, you see several things, even news, things that turn all go well with you. But just thank God. And Romans chapter 8, verse 28, excuse me. Say, for we know that all things work together to them who love God, who are those who love God, covenant players, and those who are called according to his purpose. So as we begin to thank God, when the things don't seem good, God will make them to work together for us. So thanksgiving 
It's a serious mystery. We are going to still be talking more on Thanksgiving, especially in this season of the goodness of the Lord and the fatness of heaven. Hallelujah. Remember, it is loving God, loving people, touching lives positively, and serving our God. I am Fresh Fire. We are missionaries on assignment to connect the whole world with God's love and God's presence, restoring and preparing humanity for eternity with our God. Thank you. Hello there. Are you worshiping with us for the first time? Congratulations. You are most welcome into this great gathering. This is no coincidence. We believe that your steps were ordered by God and He has a plan for you. You are now a candidate of God's revival. We are a generation called to worship the one true God. We do this in spirit and in truth, in kindness and in love, preaching and teaching the word of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Here, your mind will be renewed as we connect you to God's presence and you are now transformed into a giant of a strange order. Welcome home.